Welcome to Naresai Technologies. This is Ram Chandar. In the last video, I did talk about what is method overriding and program on top of that one. Today, we will see more explain. In this particular video, we will see about a in-depth explanation about that program. So, what is the last video program here? I have a one class name like a student. It is having two variables. One is student ID, another one is what name. And after that, I'm creating one main method. Under that main method, I'm creating an object for student class. After that, I'm using one println statement. Now, if you understand this overriding concept. First, we need to understand the internals of println method. We need to understand internals of println method. Observe, here I am taking one class. That class name is student, student dot java. In this class, what I done? I am taking one student, I am creating one student object. Student is equal to new student student s equal to new student after that what i'm doing that i'm handovering to that i'm handovers to what here sop simply what here s here now i'm creating student object in my student dot java file and hand over to where sop now whenever we printing s by using printl and method internally the control goes to internally the control goes to printl method Internally control goes to printl method of which class? Java dot io dot print stream class. Java dot io dot print stream class. So in the print stream class, only we have ten printl method: printl of zero argument, printl of int, printl of long, float, double, char, char array, boolean, string, and object. So last one will be highlighting. Let me show you that. Which method is going to highlight in this particular time? java p java dot io dot print stream so lot of methods we have among this lot of methods which printl method is executing this one printl now for java dot lang dot object student uh, reference variable we are sending to object nothing but internally upcasting happen so here printl enough what is the method printl enough what is the parameter type here object type so that means Whatever the value we are sending, whatever the value we are sending from student dot Java, value means what here? Here reference that will come and place into where here obj. That will come and place into where here obj. So internally, what type of concept here happen? Upcasting happen. So we are placing student memory into object. Object is the super class for students. So placing subclass memory in the object we can call it as what here? Upcasting. Now here. Uh, print stream of uh, printl method having one more logic. What is that? What is that? String dot value of method. String dot value of method obj. String dot value of method obj. Then what happen? Automatically control goes to from printl and method. Automatically control goes to which class? String class. Automatically control goes to string class. This is one predefined string class that is java dot lang dot what is that string in the java dot lang dot string i have one method what is that method value of method so this is the static method so that's what we are calling by using what here class name here i have object ref object ref i am writing now observe guys here so automatically the data is whatever the value which we have in the obj whatever the memory which we have in this obj that memory will come and place into where that memory come and place into where here this reference so here our student first time placed into the object and nothing but obj that obj i'm hand over to what here value of method now in the value of method again again there is one more logic ref dot one more logic ref dot two string method ref dot two string method ref dot two string method now ref dot two string method means here ref type is what here object so in the compilation time 
compiler always concentrate on compiler always concentrate on reference variable type already we discussed in the last of videos whenever we calling any variable or any method on top of any reference variable compiler always go and check whether that variable or method which is existing on in that particular reference variable type or not nothing but if you are calling two string method within the ref compiler checking whether the two string, uh, two string method is available in the ref reference variable type nothing but here reference variable type is what here object compiler will go and check whether the two string method is available in the whether the two string method is available in the object class or not fantastic we have a two string method in the two string method within the object class the syntax is public the syntax is public public string written type is string method name is two string it is having some it is having some get class dot another one is get name get class dot get name plus at the red symbol at the red symbol plus integer dot integer dot two hex string of integer dot two hex string of what is that hash code method hash code method so this is the logic having by the two string method so compiler simply go and check whether the two string method is available in the object class or not yes available then once available always jvm preference what here if it is a method is a non static method jvm preference to memory so here stud s is what type student type what type of memory it is going to hold student memory so jvm will go and execute two string method in which class student class jvm will go and execute two string method in the which class here student class again i will come back to that point first observe here indirectly we can say whenever we printing any reference by using by using sop the automatically the control going to where here object class two string method simply we can say whenever we printing any reference variable by using the println method the control going to where here object class two string method compiler control jvm control is always concentrate on memory what is the memory here student memory student memory so jvm is trying to execute two string method in which class student class do we have any do you have any two string method in the student class no no if the data is not available we guys know that automatically control goes to which class it's a super class what is the super class for student here java dot lang dot object so object class two string method will be executing so with the help of this logic get class dot get name plus at the rate of integer dot two x string of hash code we will get the output like package name dot class name at the rate of memory in hexadecimal format i don't require that logic i don't require that response i don't require that result my is my requirement is my requirement is very simple whenever i am printing s i want to print the output like 101 and ram whatever the content which i have in the s id and s name i want to print like this i want to print like this my intention is i want to print my output like 101 dot 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 ram now again let me compile this program clear the screen go to desktop java c i fund d dot student dot java what is my package name java space com dot kartik it dot ram dot my class name is what here student so what type of output are you getting package name dot class name memory in hexadecimal format i don't require this type of response see what is method overriding you can understand observe here whenever we printing reference with the support of println method println method all always providing the information like this how with the support of one predefined method which is available in the object class what is that method two string method simply we can say whenever we calling println method automatically the control will hit to object class two string method in which scenario compilation time it will hit but in the execution time it will executing from which class our student class do you have any two string method no that's what object class two string method will be executing 
So already that method logic given by whom? Java community people. According to in the last video, I given one definition, whatever the logic which is given by the Java or whatever the logic which is already existed, if that logic is not a suitable our project requirement. So, what is the usage and what is the logic and what is the response of the two string method? What is the response of the two string method here? Providing the output in this manner. I do not require this response. I do not require this response means what here that logic is not suits my requirement. My requirement is I want to print SID and S name that is enough. But I do not want to print package name and class name all this uh, stuff. So, whatever the logic given by the Java that logic is not suits to me nothing but suits my project not suits my project. So, in that particular time so what should we do we need to write our project requirement logic within my class. We need to write our project requirement logic within my class. So, let me write our project requirement logic what is that public string m1 method m1 method observe here written written sid dot 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 s name sid dot 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 s name. Now, observe sir java c iphone d dot student dot java now com dot kat dot ram dot student again we will get same output even though we are writing our requirement logic like sid and s name still we are facing the problem. The reason is what is the reason? So, by seeing the diagram you can understand using SOP of any reference control is not going to m1 method control is going to which method two string method. So, when the control is going to object class two string method if in your class you, if you do not have two string method then control goes to object class then what we need to do. So, instead of sending our request or instead of sending our control to object class two string method what we need to do we need to write the two string method in our class we need to write the two string method in our class written sid dot dot s name. Now, let me comment this method and see the output and see the output right now java c hyphen d dot student dot java what is this. So, we need to write here plus good now java c hyphen d student dot java and com dot kat dot ram dot student then what is the output 101 ram. So, that means what is method overriding concept is highlighting writing the same method within the super and subclasses. So, already in the super class like object class two string method having and it is contains some logic that logic is not suits to my requirement. Then what we need to write the same method we are writing within my class the same two string method I am writing within my class with what same logic or different logic same logic means foolishness by using extends keyword again we are getting why should we write again method duplicate codes again within the different classes I need to avoid. So, avoid means what definitely we need to write what here different logic method overriding itself telling if the logic is not sortable then you can go for what here writing the same method in your classes writing the same method which whatever the method which is having in the super class writing the same method within the our class nothing but subclass with the different logic we can call as what method overriding very important here printl method not calling our m1 method printl method calling which method two string method. So, we need to write the logic in which method two string method only not in m1 method. So, this is the internal flow of uh, printl method. So, in this video I did not discuss about uh, what is get class and what is get name and uh, remaining code that we will see in the java dot lang dot object class concept. I hope you enjoy this video for more videos please subscribe to channel. Thank you.